In the fall of 1924, Curtis Welsh, the only doctor in the port town of Nome in Alaska, raised the alarm. There was too little of the cure for diphtheria, a highly dangerous and easy-to-spread disease that was quite common for the time. Dr. Welsh ordered an additional batch and was hoping to receive it before winter because otherwise the town would be locked out by ice for eight months. But the ship with the cure didn't make it in time, and the town had no choice but to wait until spring. There were no signs of an outbreak in Nome, but Dr. Welsh was still beside himself for some reason. In December, he took in several children with a sore throat, and although he ruled out diphtheria, his suspicions grew with every passing day. Until finally, in January 1925, they turned out to be correct. He officially diagnosed the first case of the disease. Nome was home to about 2,000 people, but 10,000 more lived in the surrounding area, all at risk of contracting the illness. Dr. Welsh made sure the situation reached the ears of everyone in power to help, and an emergency committee was formed while the town was put on quarantine. Over a million units of the cure, enough to stop the spread, were found across the country and shipped to Alaska. But the real challenge was to get them to Nome itself. The port was still frozen solid. The railroad ended in Inanna, 674 miles away, and airplanes of the time were incapable of flying in the extreme temperatures of the subarctic. Thus, after a brief discussion, the only solution was agreed upon – dog sleds. Sled dogs and their drivers, called mushers, were the pride of Alaska and also the main carriers of the mail since there wasn't any transport able to navigate the area. For the salvation race of 1925, only the top mushers were chosen. Dr. Wells calculated that the serum could survive no more than six days in the harsh conditions on the trail, after which it needed to thaw, so the dogs had to be as fast as possible. The best among the mushers was Leonard Sapala with his lead dog, a Siberian husky named Togo. They were based in Nome and became a local legend for being the fastest and hardiest team ever. The cure was to be delivered by train to Ninana and taken from there by dogs in a two-team relay. One team, loaded with a precious cargo, would start in Ninana, while the other would run to meet them from Nome. The meeting point was almost halfway, in the town of Nulato. Sapala was chosen to make over 400 miles from Nome and back, but after he set off, it was decided to add more teams into the relay to make it faster, breaking the race into 30-mile legs, give or take. He didn't know about that, which almost ended in a catastrophe for Nome. Sopala and his sled ran as fast as they could, cutting the distance across Norton Sound, an inlet of the Bering Sea, which was hazardous because of the shifting ice. He was the only musher who dared this shortcut, and it saved a full day of travel. The team successfully crossed the treacherous area, although the weather was terrifying. As if to conspire against the humans, the winter of 1925 was the coldest in 20 years, with gales dropping the temperature as low as minus 100 degrees at times. When they were 170 miles into the race, Sopala, sure he still had almost 50 miles ahead of him, suddenly saw another musher having trouble with his dogs. He raced past, not wanting to slow down when he heard the man calling out to him through the wind and snow. The serum! The serum! I have it here! It turned out that the mushers going from the other side were indeed faster. The man got the cure more than a full day ahead of the original schedule, and it was a pure chance that he saw Sopala like he did. If they hadn't met, the medicine could have easily been lost, sealing Nome's fate. Sopala took the cargo from the other man and turned around. Night was falling. He had to make his way back in what would be the most perilous part of the journey. He gave his dogs and himself a short rest and made up his mind. He would dare the crossing of Norton Sound again. The winds grew even stronger, and a full-blown blizzard started when Sopala was halfway through the sound. He was afraid they'd lose their way and get stranded on an ice drift. But Togo, his trusty lead dog, had a perfect sense of smell and led the team as surely as ever. And then Sopala heard an ominous creak. The worst had happened. The ice was moving underneath them. If the ice flow started, the whole team could be stranded in the open sea. He didn't know how much they had to go in the snowstorm, 
with almost zero visibility. But he trusted his dogs, and especially Togo, and so they pressed on. The creaking got worse, and Sapala was so intent on getting out of it alive that he was almost taken by surprise when the snow veil suddenly lifted and he saw the shore. They made it. Still, it was a long way before the end of the race. They reached a roadhouse on the other side of Norton Sound and took some rest, only to continue going four short hours later. Togo, persevering as ever, led his team onward and up toward Mount Little McKinley, a climb of 8 miles in total. Finally, the sled arrived at the town of Gullivan, where they were met by the next musher on the trail and transferred the cargo. All in all, the team covered over 260 miles in 5 days, beating every other sled by a wide margin. Justice demanded that Togo have all the glory for his historic efforts, but the reality was different. The last leg of a little over 50 miles was covered by Gunnar Kassen and his lead dog, Balto. Kassen was to only travel half that distance, in fact, but he arrived to the relay point too early and found that his change was asleep. Not to lose time, he decided to press on and deliver the medicine himself. Balto seemingly approved. He was still full of strength, even after enduring a long trip in the blizzard and chilling cold. So it happened that on February 2nd, at 5.30 a.m., the cure arrived to Nome and was ready to use within several hours. The citizens were overjoyed and greeted Kassen and Balto with cheers. Soon after, their fame outgrew the town and even Alaska, making the team celebrities across the whole country. Even though every member of the relay received awards and commendations from the president, Balto's fame went much further. He received a symbolic bone-shaped key to the city of Los Angeles, a statue in New York, and even starred in a movie. And 70 years later, a cartoon based on the events was made by Disney. Togo received his share of glory too, but his role in what became known as the Great Surum Run wasn't as widely acknowledged. Sapala and his lead dog traveled across many of the states the following year, gathering cheering crowds everywhere. Finally, they decided to stay in a town of Poland Spring, Maine, where Sapala opened a kennel of Siberian huskies. There, Togo lived in love and respect until the end of his life in 1929. Three years later, Leonard Sapala sold his kennels and returned to Alaska to participate in the Winter Olympics as a sled dog driver. His team won silver. Of the events of the Great Surum Run, he only said one thing. He was glad that everything happened as it did, but the only thing that upset him was that Togo wasn't recognized as the true hero of that race. Surely he would have been happy to know that with time, the brave dog finally received the acclaim he deserved like no other. And that's how it was.